Okay, I'm going to get us started right away here. Um, again, thanks for joining us for another BC speaker series. Um, and thanks to uh, the CSA and Perry for uh, hosting us on their um, wonderful Zoom channel. Um, we are uh, just going to start off here with a little land acknowledgement in the spirit of reconciliation. I would like to acknowledge that I'm coming to you from the Tunaha um, territories uh, in the Eastern BC and Fernie BC here. And um, we are also, of course, on many places across the country, as we have just seen all the way from west to east, which is fantastic. So thanks again, guys. Um, Tom, uh, are you here? Tom Gelly on the call. Can I see you? I am. <laughs> here I am. Thank you very much for having me. Yes. So welcome. And uh, like, tell us a little bit of your journey into ski instructing and that kind of thing. How did you get into this uh, business, as it were? Okay. Well, you can hear I'm I'm Australian, so I'm calling in from Sydney, Australia today. And so I didn't grow up skiing, or not that much. I was actually a cross country skier. My dad was a big outdoor and enthusiast and he thought lifts were um you know not the way to go you use your own power to get around the place and so I grew up mostly cross-country skiing once uh once every year for a week but always had a burning desire funnily enough to go to Canada for some reason and and ski there and be in the mountains and so I made that come true after finishing my university degree in I applied science, went to Silver Star and um, yeah, got my in sort of level one and started teaching. That was back in 2006. And I pursued a career in ski instructing both between the Northern and Southern Hemisphere and skiing and teaching all around the world. Um, but the most recent sort of thing, which like is why I'm maybe, what I'd like to talk with everyone today about is like overcoming barriers, I guess, think, like thinking differently is the, is the topic or, or thinking, like how to think, um, some strategies for that. Because so yesterday morning, I, I coached a group of skiers who are all over in different parts of the world. And then I went surfing for two hours and it was amazing surf. That's why you can see this funny, wetsuit tan my neck um and then i came back and i did some more coaching and then i edited a video on ski stance uh and put that up to my site big picture skiing and so if if i hadn't you know if because i had, had a family or started a family with my wife jenny and i have archie who's four years old now and we have a house in Sydney. And so it's very like a lot of people in the ski industry you, that happens and they don't stay in the industry. You've got to be, you know, living somewhere mountainous or, you know, to make that happen. Whereas I feel fortunate that that's not happened to me because I've not let the lack of snow get in the way of me still thinking about skiing, coaching, skiing, um, yeah, it's yeah. fascinating. You having this like online platform that we've seen, like some of some of the guys here may follow you on different things or, you know, you're, like you said, you built this big picture skiing that just it's really insightful like, and like really cool opportunity to see how skiing can kind of evolve too, right? From from just being on snow to suddenly off snow you know, that's partly location based for you, but also with COVID and everything, I should assume really kicked it into the second gear, hey, or third or fourth. Maybe. Totally. Yeah, COVID was, you know, I, th I think if everyone looks hard, COVID gives you a gift in, in some way. And uh, more family time was one of those for us, but also then venturing into the world of online, you know, e-commerce and uh, online education was a big one for me and I'm yeah really really enjoying it uh the most difficult thing is just always time zone yes. you know I'm you know so that's, that's what time fun. is it there right now Tom it is it is midday 
it's midday. Just okay, that's quite appropriate. That's nice. In, yeah, in the future, it's Saturday. It's the weekend already. So in the future. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so the, I think that's enough about me. I, if you guys are ready to go, I'm going to start presenting on, on today's topic. So let's do it. Okay. So I chose this that, you know, Guy said, what do you want to, Guy Dale said, what do you want to talk about? And this is what I chose. I didn't choose biomechanics or anything else like that. I chose learning how to think to become a better skier because I think if you can work on this sort of skill and, and hopefully I really get that across today, I think you can teach better if you're teaching others and I think you can be a better learner. So both ends will benefit from this. Uh, and it's not just skiing, it's just life in general, actually, I think. So I want to start first with like asking you guys a question. Well, two, what is proving difficult to overcome in your own skiing currently? And I'd love to hear some people, you know, so maybe start thinking and writing it in the chat and then uh, we can hear from some people. So that question. And what is often difficult to teach and convey as an instructor. So it's like, what's stopping progress in either your own skiing or in your teaching or, or like what's a common thing? So like the bottom question, my example would be like, as say a, a course conductor, what do you like, do you find it's always difficult? Like people struggle and get really confused about balance over the outside ski or turning with the lower body something like that like even though you think you teach it well like why do people keep not getting it or, or that sort of thing and, and in your own skiing like what is it that you keep getting told by others that you need to work on or you feel you need to work on to overcome so has anyone uh written in the chat yet has anyone got some ideas or maybe uh wants to share that A couple of comments have come through, Tom, um, <clears throat> from Dominic saying, rushing the turn. Okay. One of the comments, another comment is difficult to convey the transition. So I guess there are two, one is for their own challenge in their skiing and one is as a, an instructor. Okay. Yeah. Another one is maintaining good technique as snow conditions or terrain gets more difficult. Yep. Um, tipping into the turn too early is coming through and uh, a big problem is fear yep so that's kind so of what i've seen so far okay great it sounds like a lot of people also uh t talking about their own skiing first because we're all it's always sort of we want to help ourselves first which is absolutely a human thing um any any teaching example ones there like uh, difficulties people want to admit around what's difficult there I, I guess the mo kind of main teaching one I can see is uh, how to convey the transition difficult to convey the transition yeah yeah it's, uh, great yeah it's it's not easy these things so just so with with what you've perhaps thought about or commented on just remember that and I want you to see at the end of this talk, if you would approach that difficulty or problem, perhaps in a new way, that would be my question to you after this lecture. So a big thing of this thinking differently, I wanted to talk about is alternatives. And, and what does this lead to? That's a really important sentence. Like, so you choose an alternative and then thinking about what does this lead to instead of prejudging and thinking you know what it is. So a little bit on alter alternatives first. So alternatives are the opposite of staying where you are right now. So if you are tipping too early into the turn, uh, you're not using the hip joint right, currently the way you're thinking about it and doing it like you don't probably want to stay there because it's going to still continue to be a problem so you probably need to look at alternatives 
and maybe you've looked at some alternatives, but maybe there's only two or three. So you need to look at four, five, six, seven, eight to find where that will be. And so progress, energy, change, improvement, and simpl simplification, they're all based on the search for alternatives, the search for alternatives, okay? So I've got there, I was just like, okay, so what if, what if one issue you're, you're dealing with is, is turning with the lower body or turn, turn your legs? Like maybe some different alternative ways of thinking around that topic, like, so turn my legs. What about trying if your constant feedback is you don't get enough turning with the lower body? Have you ever tried to like not do it? Or have you tried to turn your legs the opposite way? Have you tried to do one leg only? Have you tried to turn your like thigh, but not your foot? Have you tried to turn your foot, but not your thigh? Um, have, you turned, have you tried playing with fore and aft stuff? So things that you think are perhaps wrong. Like this is, this is a big thing with alternatives is you need to be okay with exploring territory that you perhaps perceive as incorrect or being a mistake. So I just, I just, I wanted to follow this line of thought. I was like, okay, I'm going to give you guys an example of how maybe I might think, think this, think, think this through this alternatives to solving turning with the lower body. Cause I think this is a big one in the ski world. We, we see it all the time. We're, we're always trying to help correct or, or help teach people how to do it well, how to do it better. So like, here's some exploration of it. Like what factors make turning with the lower body harder? And what factors make it easier? So like longer skis, if you put on giant like downhill skis, 210 skis, it's gonna be harder to turn with your lower body because there's a big, long, longer lever attached. If you jump down to easier, see I've put in their shorter skis and see the snow blades on, on the right. If you watch anyone who's like an okay skier, just even like an intermediate, put on a pair of snow blades you watch them immediately turn better with the lower body. So already, hopefully that makes you start thinking, hmm, I didn't have to teach them actually about turning with their lower body. I just changed the equipment. There's something in that, that, that people who are skiing on longer skis and still are not doing it very well, perhaps are not looking into or understanding. In the harder category, like heavier skis, obviously you're gonna make it harder, right? You think like the snow blades, they're lighter. You put on a big fat pair of heavy ones, they're gonna they're gonna require more effort to turn. So it's gonna make the lower body, uh, you might need to involve the upper body to help, help turn them. Heavier snow is gonna make turning with the lower body harder because the skis are gonna be catching in that snow. Uh, more edge angle. And, and sort of grip because the ski is going to want to hold wherever it is. And perhaps if you're trying to twist it or turn it, it's not going to want to do that. Uh, and then I put in there more pressure because you could have a lot of edge angles say at the bottom, but no pressure, like someone coming over roller, over a roller with their, the legs way out to the side, but no pressure on it. They still might be able to turn their legs in the air versus if there's a lot of pressure on it, you might not be able to do that. So easier, shorter skis, lighter skis, drier snow makes it easier. All these things. So these, these kind of elements, are you thinking like into this problem a little deeper than, okay, they can't turn with their legs. I'll just do another leg turning exercise to try and solve this issue. Because the thing is, when you get someone, most of the time you can stand there without your skis on. They take their skis off in their ski boots, show them how to turn their leg pretty much everyone unless they're really uncoordinated can do that so you got to ask yourself like why are they still struggling to get that concept even as a like a level four candidate level three candidate years on why are they still getting told that you're not doing it well enough i think this area looking into it like this can be, can be really helpful so yeah, what if it's about learning to control levers and feeling pressure? So I'm just gonna share a little bit of uh, video here to help break it up. So.
So, and, and uh, let's go, here we go. This is this just guy I found on YouTube, little uh, park skier guy. I'm gonna put it in slow motion. Watch these like short turns he does right up in here. Some really nice little lower body movements he makes just in there, which if you watch him ski on longer skis, he doesn't really do that. So I was like, that's really interesting. And I found this guy who's like a, a blogger, a blogger, I should say. And he's in bail and he, he's like rented some snow blades and, and tried them out. And you can watch, look, turning pretty well with the lower body. Pretty well on these shorter skis. And then he's got some uh, comments here. I would say give them a try. Um, they're not quite as fast as skis, but they're really, really easy. Uh, Play that again. But they're really, really easy. Uh, they're not, they maneuver really easy. I think they're easier on your knees and that sort of thing. So it's a good third day skiing kind of thing. If you want to just kind of take a break, take things a little bit slower. Um, maybe go through some trees or something like that. He's even suggesting go through some trips, right? So I just, I just find that fascinating. Like first ever day trying them, his main comment is it's easier. This Are is his daughter, I think. The powder. It is so much more fun because I think there's like a fresh layer and my skis just glide and it's so much easier. It is easy and it's really fun. I mean, as you can see. Easy, easy, is... easy. That word is an underrated word, I think. And so you like look into it and check out this guy. This guy's from Alta. Okay, last Check out these. year I got Look at 123, this leg and that was the little shy. So I'm almost at 100. So basically, I'll I'll get 150 this year, and that that's pretty good. Yeah. I'm and then a little bit more of him here. It's definitely some really good turning with the lower body. Really obvious. And so, you know, you put him on, say you put him on a pair of 200 centimeter skis. I don't think you'd be able to do the same sort of thing. So it just brings up, and I'm gonna ask you guys maybe now for some comments on like what you, yeah, what, what, do, you, what do you think of after me sharing that? And yeah, has it made anyone start thinking a little bit differently about say just picking turning with a lower body as an example Is there any example any any comments questions there lucia Is that... oh i think we might have so oh, did somebody go <laughs> oh, here we go we've got some comments there on the on the post i think you've got people thinking for sure you yeah know, um, hopefully i mean what about you then how, how does that like how does that trigger your mind what i've just shown there yeah so you what you're doing is kind of switching it up right so rather than just trying to tackle the problem in like a traditional way you're mm -hmm. like so what if we look at this a different way and see if we can address any problem it might not be not necessarily turning with the lower body right but anything you come across like and try to think outside yep. the box a little bit for like, what can you do? What could you do differently if you're coming across challenges of trying to get somebody to do something or yourself, right? Even yeah, if you're still doing. Exactly. Right? And, and like, the, like the two categories of like, what makes this concept easier? What makes this concept harder? Like, I think that's a really good one to explore. And you could like in a group, if you're an, a teacher, mm -hmm. Like, I think that would be a really fun thing to do. Like, I, I love doing boot skiing to teach turning with the lower body. And, and, the, and the, like, the nice thing is, like, like, why is it? Well, you start getting into, like, engineering and physics concepts of, of leverage and pivot points and all that sort of stuff. And you take the ski down and now it's not such, you take that factor out of, out of it. And then conversely, like what's great for, pe for people going for say the level four when they need to refine it is you make it harder. So you take side cut out, you put them on old straight skis that are longer and now they've got to figure out 
using their current skills, how to ov overcome that. But, but this idea of what makes it easier, what makes it harder and trying some different alternatives to help you come up with some answers is, is, uh, is the message there. So let's go back to the, my screen. Because it's a it's a really common trap, and it's just it's just human nature. It's not anyone's fault. It's just how we're wired to only search for information that confirms what you already believe. So, so my first like little thing, if you're taking notes, would be how do I become a better thinker? Be like cognizant, be aware of when you start asking questions. It could be about anything. It could be about buying a new car. Like, you know, you're looking around, you're asking everyone, is, is Hyundai the best? It's the best car kind of car. It's the best brand, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. My friend, and someone says, no, it's not. Oh, okay. I'm not going to talk to this person or I shut off. We, we do that all the time. We're always looking to confirm what we already believe. This doesn't lead to alternatives. And so even I put in there using, using Google, like to look up, like, you know, even YouTube, like, is turning with the lower body the correct way to make a ski turn? So we're even searching outside of like, okay, believing uh, like a, the belief that that is the best way to turn can sometimes trap you into a certain like narrower point of view and only one way of looking at it. So yeah, just be really aware. And, and I've got there in that picture, like why, why do we have these cognitive biases? You know, social pressure, how we're educated, experiences in the past, emotions, um, yeah, and limits in the mind's attention, <laughs> really, really important one there. So, yeah, I, I wanted to put in this part here to just say, just because there's an adequate way of doing something doesn't mean that there may not be a better way. Like... Um, for instance, the, the iPhone, like if iPhone just stopped at the first iPhone, then, you know, we wouldn't have the amazing technology we have today where you can pretty much just run your whole entire life from your, from your phone. So yeah, keep alternatives is what helps us, you know, progress, find um, solutions, simplification. Now, if we're gonna go down this road of alternatives, in our thinking and, and in our actions and perspectives, you're probably gonna come across making mistakes and we don't like making mistakes. And it's pretty much the, the main reason why we avoid alternatives because we're afraid that it's gonna become a failure. Now, Edward de Bono, I'm a really big fan of his, he's, he's a big thinking advocate. And he says, that in the English language there, there isn't a word, like a different kind of word for mistake, which is more like a fully justifiable venture, which for reasons beyond your control did not succeed. So that's not, not a mistake. Um, it's okay to try something out and then come to your own conclusion at the end. But what will stop you is thinking already that this is gonna be bad and, and not going, going down that road at all. So I've got a picture of my ski boot there. This is an old one before I had um, Fisher boots. This is a Dalbello boot. And I was speaking to a guy named Harold Harb, interviewing him on a podcast and he was talking about boot setup. And he sort of looked at me in my boots and he's like, oh, your cuffs don't allow enough adjustment for the shape of your legs. And, um, and he said, and, and the bolts that are in there at the moment don't even have enough range to even you know be adjusted to, to to make it work so what you should do or what you could do is drill out the holes and reposition them so that's a picture of me i'm taking it apart and i took a dremel and i re-drilled a hole and moved the cuff so i could tip it out further so more like a like a for my sort of bowed tibia legs and i took them to canada and skied them and it was straight away it was great it was really good but then i skied revelstoke partway through that trip and ended up with knee pain after the second day 
and realized the next morning when I put my boots on, my boots had broken at some part um, of this trip, this uh, trip I was doing on the Powder Highway. So I was skiing with a, a, like without a cuff that supported me laterally. So my knee was working really hard and all the bumps and the long runs there. And so there was kind of like a mistake and like the boots basically were broken, but it was really worthwhile because I figured out this is what I need to do. And then a few days later, I bought a pair of boots from uh, off Jamie Jack actually. And they've like my skiing, I would say changed for the better. And I'm going to use that word easier again, became easier to do all the things I knew I should be doing because I went down this road and kind of made this mistake in, in my boots, but it helped me come to a really good conclusion. So yeah, hey, just, yeah. Tom, just, just a, there's a good comment here in the chat. Yep. Um, from Gary says, Tom, I assume you're suggesting to think of alternatives and what you're doing is not working well for clients ourself. Um, I guess experimenting with your boots to look for a better solution. Um, uh, recognizing that moment when it isn't helping and then having the awareness to make the appropriate change rather than staying with the same feedback and drill and just doing it more even though it isn't working. So I guess exactly. that might relate to your change and experimentation with your boots. Yes. Yeah, the boots is just one example. I'm not saying yeah. like... Yeah, it's just yeah, one. But, yeah, just one example. But that, that situation is exactly right. I just think... Most people here can probably flash back to say even last season and like maybe teaching someone and, and the lesson before what you said and how you did it, they got great results. And then the next person didn't, but you just kept saying it the same way. Um, yeah, so you're not searching for alternatives and, and different ways of, of thinking. Um, yeah, so that's that's the real message here. And even like 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 going on into like so okay, great, I changed it for that person. And then you come up with five different ways of teaching someone how to get out of a wedge to start their turn. Even just stopping at that and going, great, like back at the beginning, remember like uh not searching for alternatives is basically like just staying where you're at. So just keep looking, keep, it's really interesting and fun. And what you discover is, is, is really cool. So I'll maybe give some examples more related to skiing here. So this is a, a student I'm coaching who's in China. And um, at the beginning of the season, he was skiing in an indoor slope and he sent me some video and he thought the main problem was his issue was, was, was his balance on the outside ski. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, I don't think that's the problem. I think you have no idea how to control your inside ski. So for, for two weeks, I gave him the task of skiing on one ski or, or if it was on two skis, putting all the balance and all the pressure on the inside, uh, inside legs. So um, yeah, so totally the opposite to what he thought. After two weeks, he went back onto real snow and he was like, holy cow, I can't believe how different my skiing feels. And I actually have better balance on the outside ski because I realized the balance on the outside ski is really uh, like, has a huge contribution. The inside ski has a huge contribution to how my whole body works and how my inside ski edge is used to help manage the inside half of my body. So he, he was like, that was a really big change in the way he was thinking about stuff. And it was a complete alternative to, here's another five different variations of an outside ski drill and keep doing it. Because he'd, he'd, and, and I, that was the thing, I knew he'd been doing a lot of skiing, he's going for his level four. And so I didn't want to give him the same thing to work on. So, if I show you, this is, this is him more recently uh, skiing now. And when you see him come over like the, the roll a bit further, he makes it some really ripping turns. Like that one. And this one coming up here. Some lovely acceleration deflection off the hill. <laughs> Looks very balanced. And so he spent a lot of his time 
working on how he manages that that inside leg and feeling the inside ski so so he was tasked with yeah if you only had this leg how would you balance and and work things out and then the result was the outside ski improved uh, hugely just just on that I've got this mono skier here and I don't know if, if there's probably a couple of people in this call that have tried it, but like I would say a lot of people here believe that balance on the outside ski is probably one crucial element to being able to turn well with the lower body and to create upper and lower body separation. I'm just saying as a general, there's probably some people that, you know, don't, but in general, I'd say in a quick, like, do you believe in this statement or not? I'm going to throw it out that I think most people would. Check out this guy's upper and lower body separation on a mono ski, in which if you put pressure on the outside leg, uh, it's, it's, it just doesn't work. The thing slides out from underneath you. And you can look up like people teaching like tips on how to mono ski. And, and like one of the main tips is to look at that position. That is a pretty good position up and lower body separation, turning with the legs. So people uh, teaching mono skiing actually tell you to pull up this leg and press down that one. So the mechanics in this ski turn are actually almost the opposite to like what most people do with the outside leg, which is press this way on it. Yeah, pulling up is what you want to do. And so it comes back to again, don't get stuck with say, just the, the technical theory understanding of, of how skiing is done. Look at things like equipment. So see what you're dealing with here is a lever. The board is, um, like a lever and if you press here on it it's going to flatten it but if you pull up here it's going to help lift it over if you press as close as you can to this edge it's going to help it from not sliding out and also not push the the board down so i just think it's a really interesting concept so you go okay how would that relate to to normal skiing well think about this as your entire foot so not two legs, but one leg. And, and the outside leg is actually your like pinky toe side of your foot. So you're pulling that up and then you're pressing that down. So yeah, I just think, I just think it's an interesting avenue to go down thinking in terms of like your beliefs of, again, lupo and the pressure on the outside ski and just all there. Like just be careful with what, yeah what truths you believe in um would be uh what i'm trying to get across there another example of uh thinking differently here is myself and so i'm going back to 2012 for this one 2012 i was i was uh on the road to making the australian demo team to go to Ushuaia in Argentina. Like that was my sole focus. I'd been on the demo team for, for Telemark and I was like, I, I'm now going to try and make it for Alpine. And I was in Sun Peaks and I met uh, Fritz, an Austrian guy. And he actually is trained with, he's like uh, very good friends with Richie Berger and Richie Berger trained him uh, to get his full cert. And they sort of were in the same ski school together and, uh, hung out a lot anyway so I think that turning with the lower body and a stable upper body is essential for short turns and the APSI you know who I trained with and the CSIA they both sort of really agreed with that and so I was like okay that's the way to go I just got to keep working on that I asked Fritz what he's doing because he's, he's a short turn that is way better than mine and so I want to learn it and say, what do you do to initiate your short turns? And he says, I rotate my upper body before my legs. I go, what? But, you know, we don't do that. We don't teach that. So already I'm not looking for answers within my own understanding and beliefs. But I go, you know what? 
I've seen enough proof. You're a better skier than me. I'm going to try it. If he wasn't a better skier than me, that would probably be, I'd be more, I'd be less inclined to try it. But anyway, um, that's what's where social bias comes in. So I tried it, felt very different, but I was like, oh, but I don't want to not get on the demo team if I'm rotating everywhere. So my wife videos me and I look at it and I go, what? This is the kind of picture I've been looking for all along. And that's it over on the right there, the top of the turn, like the upper body really going a little bit more directly down the hill, the legs moving away, some early edge, really nice, like high sort of uh, turn shape, like shaping of the, of the whole turn there. And that was the result. And it was just, I'll always remember that as a good lesson in trying something that I thought was wrong. And, and I should clarify, like, you know, you say that to an absolute beginner who has no edging skills, it might not go so well. But to someone who's got some good understanding and can ski well, you can say things like this, think of alternatives and try it out. Like test it out. Remember like the mistakes thing. Don't, it could be a venture that is, you know, doesn't turn out the way you want it to, but you're never gonna know unless you, unless you try. So yeah, really good example. And I, 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 can, I can think of like four of those in the last five years that have led, led to some of my biggest breakthroughs in my own skiing. And it was changing how I thought about things. And it was usually against like challenging a, a current thought that I really held as a truth. But getting the so same outcome, Tom, right? Yeah, so getting, what's that? What you're getting to is the outcome that you want. You've just used different words or different method to get there, right? But you've- Yes. Yeah, it's very outcome focused, actually. Exactly. And that's why I put this one in here, like the fundamentals are not changed, really. So like, we all agree, we, you know, like see these things in all the best skiers that the pressure is mostly on the outside ski. Um, the, the, the turning effort is led with the lower body. So we're not trying to change those fundamentals, but yeah, you're exactly right there saying how we get there, we can choose alternatives because the mind is really kind of tricky. And so you don't have to necessarily tell it the exact right thing to get like the outcome is what I guess I'm trying to say. And we all have different interpretations of things, how I feel it is different to you. And, and so if I'm like really dogmatic about, no, this is what it feels like. This is what it's like. This is, it's like, you're really just turning with your legs. And then suddenly it's like, like, cause it felt to me at the top of the turn, I was like not turning my legs at all, like almost anti-turning them. And I was rotating my upper body uh, into it, which I thought was, you know, all the time, a mistake when whenever you know i'd been on a course oh tom you're rotating the upper body oh okay i must have been doing that but yeah so uh i'm gonna throw it back to the group and just see is any are there any more comments worth mentioning there lucia or is anyone like I don't know, is it, is, do you ever let people come off mute? It sometimes it's helpful, I find, to not just be able to write it because some people want to talk and it's easier to express it that way. I think it'll be a good time. Sure, that. people can put their hands up. Yeah, we could put some hands up, right? Yeah, and see. Yeah. People yeah. want to engage a little bit in this idea of thinking differently to get the same or, a diff or an outcome that you're trying to get, right? I like it. It's not a one-way street here, you guys. I'm trying to get you guys to think differently. It's not just my role. <laughs> Were you rotating or preventing over rotation? Uh, well, okay, I'll just tell you what I felt because um, it's not an absolute. What I felt I was doing was rotating. I was taking my upper body and I would finish a turn and I was doing that. So I would rotate it. But what happened that I, that I realized was positive was as long as my legs, I didn't let my legs turn with it, that's still upper and lower body separation. It was just like, which end are you, are you moving? Because I am I just wanted to delay the turning because I wanted my legs to go further away. Like the more performance you get your legs out here before they really start turning. It's like, like, which direction are they turning with? 
in is another thing to think about. Like I was just keeping them going this way for longer, but getting my upper body inside earlier by rotating it. So they diverged in, in different paths. I think Richie's, you know, suggesting there, she's like, she's just trying to get some, some thoughts going out going, you know, is it that you're suggesting to get folks to move more? I don't think you're necessarily suggesting anything per se, right? No. You're just exploring um, a different way of, a, of coming at a problem and, and something that surprised you. So you're using that as an example to say, yes. hey, like, I didn't think this would work, but I tried it. And actually it came to the outcome that I was trying to get to all along, basically. Yeah. And then the topic is like, is like thinking how to become a better thinker. And so like, a, like, cause a lot of time we just want to know the right answer. So I can kind of tell in that person, they're just saying like, what should I do next time? Just tell me like, should I just get them to move more? Yeah. Like, cause she's just looking for the right answer doesn't want to make a mistake. Well, I'm really just trying to say like, take a step back for a second and just think, how do I usually approach this? Let's try two different alternatives. And I think this is really, really valuable, especially for people who, you know, get are attacking the same goal for a long period of time. And exactly. don't, don't necessarily make that next step. So like, like you said okay so there's an outside ski drill okay here we go i'm going to give you another one and another one and another one well maybe something's going we need to look at it differently it's not that there's not anything wrong with the outside ski drill or that of course we do actually need to use the outside ski it's just that we're trying to create a new solution to get yep. you to move forward from where you're kind of stuck in yep. a way right like yeah because and i'll come i'll just give another personal example like i love skiing i like so much so like it is my passion you and when me. yeah and when i couldn't travel for skiing and even before that when i was realizing that to have a family and, and own a home and everything means i have to give up seasons that was very difficult and I didn't want to stop doing what I loved. So then think of the alternatives now, like down the road, I had no idea I'd be doing this, but like most people would think to teach skiing, you need snow. Uh, like I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm, near, I'm near a beach. I'm not near anyone. And so like, there's an alternative, like totally out of the box, very different as an example of, yeah, like what you want to try and achieve, like what that outcome focus, what's the outcome? I want to teach skiing. I want to be involved in the ski industry still like so much, but these are my barriers. I could have let them be my barriers and just become a surfer and done something different. I didn't, I kept searching for alternatives. So that's just an example from my life. So. Yeah, I'm I think I really am speaking to, to the people that are like, you know, fourth time trying their level four, third time trying the level three, getting the same feedback, not making progress. This, this lecture could be like the biggest thing ever to change that direction and that course. So, yeah. What's that one from Bob, uh, Lucia? Uh, that says, would you involve the student in coming up with some ideas? Let's try this sort of thing. Like, definitely. Yeah. Well, well yeah, de de definitely. Okay. So how about, um, let's go back. Because I did, I was like, uh, had a little bit of an exercise here. So let's try some alternatives. So uh, like, for example, I think I'm still referring to the turning with the lower body sort of idea from earlier. Like if that's, if that's our outcome focus, like how can we get people to turn with the lower body more accurately, more refined, better? Um, okay, so 
what if we played with pressure versus the pivoting? So try and like experiment with, 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 with yourself and with someone else, like trying to apply a lot of pressure, which just means your body weight is on the skis and pivoting. And then trying to be as light as possible, but not jumping. So not like a hop turn, because that's an obvious, really good exercise, why it's being used. Like why can people turn their legs like mostly pretty well in the air? Well, the skis are not interacting with the ground. There's no friction. There's no like catching points. It makes it easier. So then can you kind of like reduce that and almost like uh, stay really low or, or like almost like suck your feet under as you're trying to make the turning effort? Because through that, I would hope someone would learn and feel like, an, like pulling another lever, what that does to the outcome I'm really after. And then so like in, in, in another different thing away from turning the lower body, someone we met at the beginning was talking about how difficult it is uh, to teach the initiation and what you should do at the initiation uh, of a turn. So like what, like let's, let's see with some examples and, and there's no right or wrong. Remember what could be a wacky or very different way that you like say for you that you could try in terms of initiating a turn. So say you have always thought, okay, initiating a turn, I move forward, I, I, I shift my balance to the new outside foot. Like say you think that those two things, is there anyone there that wants to comment or make a, a suggestion on a different alternative that, that you could uh, try? Oh, I think oh. maybe a mirror. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's Amir, Amir said another alternative is to change legs, side, and turn. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying right now. Yeah, it's a very, very hard situation. First, in uh, getting the balance of the whole position of your body, the stance is very important. So, the way that you put your mind in challenge and get Another another alternative of the balance or stance, I think you break it. One of that thing is um, when you uh, put your, your right side on the other side in the, in the left side, then try to try to turn. Then all your mind gets confused. First, you fall down a couple of times, but after a while, you feel your body, you feel the stand. I'm just going to jump in here, Amir. Hang on a second. I think you're missing the uh, challenge here. You're explaining something you've already done because you're talking about it from the perspective of you've tried and succeeded. I want you to break out of that. So for me, I would have to come and think of a really different idea of initiating a turn. So uh, let me try and give you an example. Like I'm going to try and think of something that's just totally coming to me for the first time on starting a turn. So for example, I'm going to try and deliberately cross my skis to start a turn. Like that would be an alternative. And I'm first going to think, oh, I'm going to like, I'm going to cross my skis. What happens if it doesn't happen? Okay, what happens if there's some reflex in you that stops it and creates a different way of initiating a turn that I just suddenly discover? So the challenge is don't tell me about something you've already done. Like I've got to do that because I'm presenting, but I want you guys to challenge your own way of thinking right here and now on a different way, particularly if you're like stuck with how to initiate a turn, think how do I normally do it? What could be a completely different way of trying to initiate a turn that's maybe even bad or you perceive as bad? That's like my challenge. Linda, like Linda said, whip your head downhill fast. Or, yes, uh, like uh, Linda, do you ever do, like what do you do with your head normally then? Like maybe you wanna come off mute and just say like, would that be very 
still okay linda says very still perfect <laughs> perfect like there's a realization i always do this when i initiate a tone guess what linda like there's a video on my site called looking into your turns um it's like very insightful and i tell you what i mean every sport talks and puts a lot of emphasis on where you look is where you go and looking differently from where your skis are going like that's separation which is a big concept in uh in all ski like csia of how do we create separation of, of things moving on, on different paths so linda gets a gold star anyone else <laughs> was dominic saying if he if he moves try moving back and inside <laughs> yeah of inside. Have, you, have you ever tried that dominic Yeah, uh, it, it basically gets you to your outside ski faster, right? Because if, you, if you're thinking of your outside ski, you're kind of late. <laughs> so if you want to try yeah. and build that, that platform a little earlier, then you kind of have to, basically, a lot of the times when we talk about calendar rotations and that kind of stuff, you, you, get, you get on the inside anyway because you're over uh, rotated counter rotated so mm -hmm. it's it's about accepting that you're you're kind of uh and and um uh, your talks about uh, basically p pointing the belly button to the outside ski and for me that that really helped because i i used to be really really countered mm -hmm. and stuck <laughs> but, oh, no, but see, here's my here's my challenge you don't don't go yeah. away what's a now another new way that you this season you could try that's completely new again. That's my challenge. See, everyone, everyone doesn't think of alternatives. This is perfect to my point. So, so just on the spot, like how, like, could you make that even more different to test it, Dominic? Uh, probably hop from one ski to the next, <laughs> because essentially, I, I always keep the two skis on the ground, so maybe okay moving. yeah great like think what do you normally always do and and possibly would never try because you'd you'd assume already you'd know the answer mm -hmm. so yeah that there, there, there would be like like a, a a really good one um yeah yeah totally so it's like yeah do it really wide or like 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 with a massive like what if you believe that a, a big, big, yeah. bad right mm -hmm. try it with a huge lead change mm -hmm. and see what um see what uh what happens there okay perfect cool but th th i'm glad you said what you said because it helps with this whole topic of alternatives and just getting practiced because you'll find yourself all the time um yeah going with what you're you're used to and if you want to keep making progress keep trying um so some alternatives that's why i put up that that picture of wayne wong some people will be have no idea who he is but uh that one there this guy here like have you ever tried in the bumps not a dolphin turn but like a wayne wong style turn initiation where you are like as back on the tails as he is to start a turn because I would say it's probably very different to the majority of people's ideas on where you should be to initiate a turn from. But uh, I won't say much more than like, you should give it a try. It has some very surprising results um, in there. So any other good ones there, Lucia, from, from people? I think we've got some ideas coming, but uh, I, I think it's really cool, Tom, to to have that discussion and, and remind ourselves that it's it's not that what what you're talking about here is a certain technique or yes. trying to say this is how you should ski. In fact, you're yes. trying to say like try to move away from thinking how should I ski, and then yeah. see if you can try different alternatives to get to the outcome in the end that you were initially thinking of potentially. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Think about like when Ted Ligeti started dominating, mm -hmm. he tried 
an alternative way or like an alternative line, an alternative technique. Um, and then everyone started copying him. But, you know, like that's like kind of risky, um, especially at his level. And, and a lot of people too, like you put a lot, a lot of time invested in where you're at. But if you're stuck and you're not progressing, remember like I've, that, that slide back here, what alternatives. So this is a really interesting comment from, yeah. from Linda. Linda mentions, she says that, these techniques would might be best for advanced skiers and that the beginners are already doing some of these things poorly. But do you know what I think? I think actually sometimes beginners, because they don't have any preconceived idea about how you should ski, they just try some things and they get down the hill, you know, yep. and, and they actually manage to do stuff just by, by trying, which yep. is kind of cool. Yep. You know? Yeah, and they, they they like have to use alternatives, and they're sort of like, okay, what happens if I do this? Whoop, that worked out pretty bad. Like you get your own internal feedback. Like I think a lot of people that don't search for alternatives do end up being feedback junkies on on courses and relying on the coach or whatever to tell them if it's right or wrong, and and that's a very slow and very difficult path to follow. Um, whereas so searching for alternative really way Go to ahead. kind of you're kind of creating a way to think of connecting how yeah you're again your outcome but what you're trying to to feel and, and experience with uh, with with what you actually do with your like activities right so you're yep. like okay, try these different activities to see and connect your um, your feelings a little bit better so you actually you actually get something different to happen. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's just happening. Like all, like I really enjoy it. It's happening all the time for me. Um, like I can just remember, like I've been playing with, cause I'm not on snow, like inline skates. And I thought I sort of, as soon as you think, you know, something, so I'm like thinking, I think I know how you should initiate with a pair of roller, roll, like roller blades. And then someone suggests something different. Like, no, 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 no. Here's why you should do it the way I say it. Da, da, da. And he's like, uh, and anyway, basically discussed, uh, discussion stopped. He was sat in his camp. I sat in my camp. For some reason, a week later, I was like, oh, stuff it. I'll try it. I'll try what he was suggesting. It sounds stupid and it's not going to work, but I'll just try it. <laughs> nice. And guess what? It was, it was better <laughs> and I came back and I apologized to him and I said thank you and I actually thanked him I said thank you so much it's one of those moments again where doing what you thought was wrong trying the alternate not option one two but but the third which you thought was not good led to like oh that's that feeling that I that I'm looking for and I felt a few times but I didn't know how it came about oh it's it's this and it's, it was like it was being way more back on my outside foot at the start of a turn than I short than I thought I should be. So, um, and I thought I'd just, you know, fall over or something good wouldn't happen. Preconceived ideas getting in, in the way of progress again. And that's so. even for yourself, like when you're thinking about these topics, right? So you've got this on your brain going, yep. okay, like I'm trying to think of alternatives and be open-minded to something different, but uh, yeah. You still yeah. come across these biases, right? Where you actually yeah. kind of yeah. cognitive bias. Totally. Yeah, yeah. So just like I said in the beginning, just the first step is just start being aware and catch yourself when you do that. That's the perfect moment then to be like, hmm, just caught myself. Let's try an alternative. So you're on a course. Hmm, just happened. You know, I, I asked the question of, of the of the uh, course conductor that I, that I, you know, I'm trying to find the answer. I already want, I just want confirmation of what I think I know instead of being open-minded for, for alternatives. So yeah, just be aware first. So yeah, so alternatives are the opposite of rigidity. They are necessary for progress, simplification, change and energy. All those words I want, I want progress. I want, I want things to be simpler. I want to be able to always change and I want to have more energy. So alternatives to me, really good, but, but it's definitely not natural to, to do them because of 
what can be mistakes or perceived mistakes. So just be just be mindful of that. So so Tom, it's it's really yep. experimenting and being outside your comfort zone with your go-to body movement patterns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like thinking. Be uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. You got to get a bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and then on the on the, you know, because there's gonna be there are gonna be what you again, it's not mistakes. Don't think of them as mistakes, but think of them as research. Um, because it's it's always worthwhile knowing, like, okay, great, well, I won't do that again. I'm not gonna uh redrill my cuffs again myself because I don't have the skills to do it and the and the plastic putty that I used broke when it was minus 10 and you know my knee I don't want to damage my knee by uh by doing that but I knew it you know I tested it and um and there was some positives that came out of it because I, I knew what boots I needed to get in the end after that um yeah so find a barrier and start looking for alternatives and just watch things change it's it's really uh exciting i'm going to finish with this is this is apparently a jewish uh sort of saying and, and the saying goes whenever you see two options take the third so <laughs> you know don't don't do what everyone else is doing yeah think of think of another way there's always more ways of doing things so thanks thanks everyone for listening i hope it's uh gonna help you this season especially the people like I know how frustrating it is to be, you know, stuck somewhere and you, and you really want that, that, you know, that level four or the level three or whatever it is, or to make the demo team. Trust me, looking down, using alternatives, uh, not only in actions, but perceptions uh, is going to really help you help you get there. Um, hey, Tom, uh, Norm, Kreutz had a lovely uh, summary there that uh, I'd love I'd love for him to share. Really, if he's yeah, he let's, let's hear it in person. Norm, can you share what you said? It's really great. Yeah, first of all, thanks Tom for uh, for this. It's always great listening to you and seeing you in person. Hope you and the family are well. Um, Thank you. You know, skiing. Skiing, I think um, you would agree that it only has one absolute and that being uh, physics. And uh, there's many different ways to approach, um, you know, the outcome that you want to have. So uh, uh, try and think of what your outcome is and, uh, and experiment with it to, uh, to reach that, that outcome as opposed to uh, taking kind of a rigid look at, uh, at what your organization or whoever's organization says that this is what you need to do. Um, I think you can become your own teacher that way and, uh, and experiment a little bit uh, so that that, uh, that outcome is reached. Norm, do you, do you have a memory or a story you'd share of where this is, yeah, of an, ex an example of this? Would you, can you think of one? No, yeah, well, <laughs> One of the, I had just become a level four. I'm I'm going up the, uh, the yellow chair at Silver Star with uh, with Martin Olson and uh, and I remember him saying, um, you know, we got to turn our turn our feet. And uh, and I said to him, I said, you know, it doesn't feel like I can turn my foot because if I turn my foot, uh, my my foot supinates. It doesn't pronate. And uh, I, I feel that I actually have to turn my, my foot to the outside of the turn. And uh, again, in context, I'm trying to do a high end turn with this, but I, I, it, it also pertains to snowplow turns and everything else. Uh, in order to pronate the foot, if you just sit there and, and try and pronate your foot, you'll notice that your, your toe moves to the outside. Um, and then your leg has to do the turning. So there, our organization at the time was saying, you know, turn your feet, turn your feet. And we still say, turn your feet. But if someone uh, takes you literally on that, turning their feet, uh, they can't edge the ski. So, you know, there, there's one, one instance where you're just kind of thinking out, a little bit out of the box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And anything recent that like, maybe not even in skiing where you've, 
some re you've realized you've come up against your own rigidity and and uh, but you've managed to find an alternative well uh, just uh you know in in biking i guess uh because i've been oh, doing yeah. a, a bit of mountain biking in the, in the last little while but uh you know just uh uh, positioning on on the bike in order to climb a, a steep hill something that's a little bit loose and and trying trying to get up there you know you listen to everyone uh to uh to, to position yourself there get up on the horn of the the saddle you know uh, uh get back on the wheel it, it, i have to have to figure out that that position myself with my bike uh the type of bike that i have and uh uh, the type of power that I have um, in order to to get up that hill, so I can't just listen to someone else who may end up riding yeah. a little bit differently than I I do, and so yeah. the equipment, uh, the physiology, everything comes into play there, and um, I, I think skiing is is very similar that way. Yeah, you know, I'm absolutely. short. Uh, I can't. I I have a harder time relating to someone that is a little bit taller with different levers. Uh, I can suggest things. But uh, those those levers are different. Uh, they put on, you know, uh, someone like uh, Guy Gillespie uh, and myself skiing together. We're going to look a little bit different. Um, yeah. Because our levers are different. Yeah, yeah. But but uh, and on the on the same page though, like, could glean some interesting things because of the way you're used to using your levers versus the way he is. You would maybe you discover something new by trying to apply what that you know even if it is like oh now i know what it's like when you get that long lanky person on your course and you're teaching them how you ski with shorter levers and they're struggling and getting left behind everyone like like there's a good example of how um yeah like going down what you perceive as a wrong road might end up being a positive because you become a better coach because you uh you have an, an affinity like to to what that person is is going through but um yeah. so Tom, yeah yep i was actually going to bring this up earlier so thank you norman for jogging that memory it, it happened at silver star when i was training with janice morgan and i was on my level three course and i was trying my damned hardest to be centered you know everyone was like shoulders over your knees over your toes be centered down the whole thing and Janice was like, well, why, why are you pitched forwards? And I'm like, I'm not, I'm centered. And he's like, no, 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 you, you're way ahead of your, your base of support. I'm like, how can I be ahead of my base of support? My, my, my shoulders, my knees, does anything. She goes, look yep. at you. You're like a daddy long legs. Look how long <laughs> your legs are. She goes, just move your hips a bit further back. I was like, no, 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 no. That's going to put me back seat. Yeah. Of course, it took me the whole afternoon to kind of give in to Janice's nagging. And I did, and it was like the best thing ever. <laughs> you know, yeah. I finally had grip through the bottom of that turn because you're right, my legs are so long, my femurs are so long that my hips are going to be slightly further back than somebody else. And I just had to realize that I had to ski to me and not to Norm, because I'm never going to ski like Norm because I'm, you know, two feet taller. Sorry, Norm. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah, this is really nice to hear some uh, some stories and personally examples there. That was fantastic. I love that. <laughs> hey, Lucy, I'm I'm yeah. Go ahead. I, I'm pretty much going to wrap up yeah, soon. Great. Um, if there's any more questions, maybe fire them away. But um, yeah, I really want to thank you again, Tom, for for joining us. I think that was really fun, and uh, we'll look forward to reviewing it again when we have the recording up on the uh, CSI BC uh, so snowprobc.com we'll have it up there and and Tom we're going to share it with you so you can share it in other places as well uh, which is great yeah thank you yeah Stoke great joined us today very excited yeah me yeah me too I always always enjoy uh talking with skiers and so I thank you guys for taking out time out of your Friday night. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to be finally back on snow again. Fingers crossed there's no other crazy COVID variant that comes out that they shut the airports. 
but yeah, almost two weeks time. You'll be in putting, Canada. Putting my feet on Canadian soil and skiing. <laughs> yeah. And trying some alternatives. I got to, I already have like a good little list of things that I know I've never tried before and, and want to want to test out. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to, um, to do that. Awesome. Well, thanks, Tom. And thanks, everybody else. And have yourselves a good night.